Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of this Cottagecore Minecraft survival series. This is episode 4 and in the last episode we built up this barn together and we had a lot of fun. We got a bunch of animals and they all seem to be liking it in there, I think. But today's episode is going to focus on something else, something we need. I have been debating on what I'm going to do with this cave pretty much since we made the crop field. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to mine all of this out keep the ravine river type thing and put our enchantment table in there but first there's a visitor let's go see what he has it makes me nervous when they spawn over here by the crops because i'm always afraid that they're gonna trample my crops anything useful no well the trader had to go to his next town but he did leave me some leads because he was so useless so thank you wandering trader thank you very much since we don't have an official XP farm, I have been trading emeralds for glass with my librarians, turning that glass into glass panes, and then trading it with my cartographers for more emeralds and more XP. I've also been smelting every single resource that I've been gathering from the mines in order to get a bunch of XP. That way we can try to do some enchanting today. This is mainly due to the fact that I need silk touch before we can actually build our enchantment area. So I'm gonna craft up a new pickaxe and then I'm gonna try to get at least silk touch on the pickaxe. All right, first try. Efficiency, no. Time to grindstone and try again. Fortune? Ooh, that's pretty good. That is, we will take that. I'm gonna grindstone the fortune two pickaxe now and try one more time. I'm breaking no silk touch, okay. You already know, into the grindstone it goes. Now we have one emerald mending, so I'm going to put mending on our new fortune a three pickaxe, which is amazing. Um, and then we're only missing efficiency five, which we can always get later. Also, I did make a little map of the area. I forgot to in episode one, unfortunately, but now we've made one and we have it here so we can see how it evolves over time. I love it. I'm gonna keep trying to get silk touch off cam. I'm trading with the villagers, but the villagers take a long time to reset their trades. You have to wait in game Minecraft days for them to reset. So sometimes gaining XP with villagers is a little hard when you only have a couple of them. And moving on to the cave and how I want the enchantment area to be, I'm thinking very, very overgrown, kind of like maybe abandoned, like, magical ruins vibe but inside the cave i don't know how we're gonna do that yet but we oh oh no oh no oh my torches but all of this is because i would like to get a full set of enchanted diamond armor today the game is set to hard mode and the enemies are hard the mobs hit hard so better armor is one of my biggest priorities but first i'm going to do a couple of things i'm going to get some moss and i'm also going to build this small vine farm setting this up now is going to give us some passive vine growth for mossy cobble and also just vines to add on to the build later and now just to wait I also think I want some azalea and flowering azalea leaves for inside the cave. So I'm going to do some azalea trees and bone meal them and then grab all the leaves from them. All right, now just to bone meal all of these and then we're gonna collect all of those amazing leaves. <laughs> that one did not wanna grow up, neither did those. Just a quick stop here, drop a chest for when we grab those vines later. And now to grab all of these amazing leaves. Here we go. Ah, oh, this is so satisfying. And I love the noise that the leaves make. Oh yeah, that's that's good. That's good. This is so many leaves. I think that this will be enough for the cave. Maybe even too many. But we're gonna take all the wood too. We'll need some oak wood for the cave. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about this. And now just to spread this moss really quick all over the place so we can collect a bunch of it. And now to the collecting part of the moss. And this is so nice and satisfying. Honestly, using a hoe on these blocks just makes the brain do the happy. All right, and here is our completed haul of materials that we got. A bunch of moss, almost four stacks. And we even got some rooted dirt from the trees and a bunch of leaves as well. I am looking forward to building so much. I'm going to start with some oak leaves here on the edges to try to give that overgrown like 
cliffside feel. I basically want it to look like leaves and vines have grown over the edge of the cliff here and then kind of into the opening of the cave over time. I will try to spread the leaves as naturally but also as randomly as possible to get this kind of effect. On this side and on the opposite side, I'm gonna do like an old support system. We'll see how that looks for now. I also really wanna add a bunch of flow berries and vines hanging down from all over around up here. Um, it's gonna help give it that like viney overgrown lush feel. I do like that support beam there. So let's take it all the way down into the water and then directly opposite, let's continue that same pillar down all the way down into the bottom of the water. Now I'm going to take some fencing. I want to give the impression that this is like maybe like old lattice that has kind of decayed over the entrance of the cave. And here we'll just fix the bottom of the supports on both sides. And then let's go ahead and remove all of this wood and see what it looks like. Um, I've got to fix that. Oh my gosh, that's so much better. Sorry, Glowberry. I will replant you um, right there. All right, we're going down to grab some amethyst crystals because I finally got silk touch on a pickaxe. I don't really need to take more than like four of these, but I'm just going to grab a bunch of them just in case I want some more for later designs. And I think that they are going to look really, really cool in how we're going to use them in the enchantment area. Okay, if there's zombies, I'm going to go. Another thing that I really want to go get is some lily pads. So I'm going to be searching for a swamp now and some food on the way. I haven't seen a swamp yet, but I did see some ocean on this side and I'm just going to keep boating until hopefully I find something. No matter how long it takes or how empty this ocean is. This is just taking forever. It's taking forever. Oh my gosh, there's some land over here. Oh, wait, that's a shipwreck on on land i've never seen that before anything good Ooh, okay we'll take all of that not a bad chest for a shipwreck let's hope for some good luck for the next one. Oh, i mean we'll take it it still wasn't the best though another door another chest Honestly, I didn't even know that there could be three chests on a shipwreck. Um, and I'm going to take this buried treasure map. So yeah, let's go find some loot. Ooh, okay. This looks like a swamp. Finally found one. Ah, uh, some lily pads. I will quickly complain though that this is the smallest swamp I've ever seen. It's like 200 blocks and this is the only little river with lily pads. This should be enough, but not a vibe. On the search for another swamp, can we just talk about how pretty this Minecraft sky is? Wow. No swamp yet, but we did find a jungle. So let's grab some bamboo and some melons. We are going to need these if we want to keep doing villager stuff. While I'm here, I'm also just going to grab some of this jungle wood because maybe we'll use this in the future. I don't really know. Parrot! I'm so happy we got a new friend to... Of course. Of course it has to make baby zombie noises. Now the search for a swamp continues with our new parrot friend and hopefully he doesn't make any more mob noises because I will leave him behind. Some more land finally. Oh, well, I, that was cool how the, the mountain came out of the fog like that. That's a lot of coal as well. I'm just going to take all this coal out of this windswept savanna biome. Coal is one of those resources you can just never have enough of in the early game. So you know what? Let's stack this all up. And of course, I meant stack it up literally because I want to see it all as a tower before I use my fortune three pickaxe on it. And I have to admit, this is very, very satisfying. But we have no time to waste and this is going to take a long time. So let's get into actually removing all of this dirt and stone here in the cave. I think what I really want is kind of like a small shallow hill receding downwards into maybe an eroded shrine or something like that. And I think it'll be really easy to do in this space, but now we have to actually dig it all out. 
So I'm going to voice over this entire part. I'm going to take you guys on my thought process while we are building this little area and I hope you guys enjoy. So at this part, I was just still mining out all of this area here for where the different levels were going to go down into the cave. And of course, you've got to light up your cave because it is dark and mobs are scary. I got this brilliant idea to use TNT, maybe. And then here I am mining out just a little bit of the area so that we can light the TNT. Oh no, that Enderman. I really thought he was coming for me. I jumped straight into the water. First attempt was kind of underwhelming, so let's go again. Eh, not that great. And the third one... Honestly, I should have just mined it out by hand, but I really thought it was going to be a good idea. I thought it was going to be fun and give me a cool, like, shape to go off of. It, it did not give me any of that. And honestly, I kind of got a little bit stuck between wanting to do a natural cave and a hand-carved cave, so... I went with hand carved. I think it's really interesting to mix organic with a little bit of man-made features. So the outside of the cave where the entrance is is a little bit more organic. And then this is obviously more of a hand sculpted, hand carved, man-made part of the cave, which I really like. As I kept changing the inside, I also kept changing the outside and the entrance to the cave as well. Just to make it match and look a little bit better. After that, I wanted to add in the enchantment table and the bookshelves. But I realized for it to be exactly even on both sides, I needed one more. And at this point, I used some of my remaining honeycomb that I had to make some candles. Then I was thinking about what colors we could make the candles, and I realized that we have no green dye. So now we are on an adventure to go get green dye. Luckily, I know the exact location of a desert because earlier when we were traveling around, I saw one near the jungle. And I thought this was really interesting. This is like the world's smallest uh, coral reef in Minecraft. I didn't want to waste too much time though. I just wanted to grab the cactus that we needed and just a little bit extra so we can make a cactus farm. Hopefully in the next episode, that would be cool. I smelted up the cactus and then I used the new green dye to make a couple of green candles for the enchantment room. Then it was time to change up all of that stone and add some details to the entrance and to the cave itself. I think a lot of people call this texturing, but I don't know if it was even texturing because it was just adding a bunch of different blocks and hoping that they all looked good together. This took me absolutely forever. I wanted the top point where the chests are to be moss and grass, and then in this middle bit, I thought it would be cool to incorporate some stone with the moss as well, kind of give it that like overflowing feel as it goes downwards. And as I'm sure you guys noticed, I like to use slabs for transitions between blocks instead of stairs. I just find slabs more fun and soft to use, but this all stone slab was not working for me, so I added some cobble in there as well. I also spread the moss onto the bottom step. I thought giving it the moss and maybe some cobble down here as well would give it that feel that had been abandoned for a long time and really old. And here we are continuing on the journey to change up the textures of the blocks a little bit and not just have all of that stone. I added in some stone bricks, cobble, mossy stone. Throughout this process, I also brought in lots of variants of those blocks like stairs and slabs to add some more shape to the build. I also wanted to make the dirt look a little bit more natural on the top instead of it looking so Minecrafty, I guess. I don't know much about that though. I'm still learning how to landscape in Minecraft. I wanted to bring in a little bit more structure in here as well with a crossbeam right in the middle going through the opening. And then it was time to add some more leaves to give it that overgrown vibe that we're going for all throughout the rest of the cave. I wanted these to be completely different from the oak leaves that I'm using all over on the outside. So using these azalea leaves with these flowers gives it some texture and some personality, some character. Plus, I just think that they're really pretty. On builds like this, I have a really hard time focusing on one thing in particular because once I start adding something in one area, I'm always checking the rest of the areas to see what else I can add. Like the spore blossom. And then I decided to finally add the candles, but I didn't want all of the candles to be just sitting on the bookshelves. I wanted to add some floating in the air like they were being held up by magic. If this is an ancient shrine that was abandoned long ago, I feel like there would be just magic suspending everything in the air and holding all of the different pieces together. And that was really, really cool to experience in this cave. It looks so cool with the candles lit up and then I decided to start working on the walls and the floor in here and changing up the texture on all of those blocks. I kind of did this in stages where I started with the floor and then I started with the walls, but I did all full blocks first and then added everything else like the stairs and the slabs later on. 
Also, 10 out of 10 recommend hiding light sources underneath moss carpets. I picked these purple flowers to match what we're going to do with the amethyst crystal in a moment, and I got this idea from my friend Blockdown Build. I'll leave a link to his video in the description. He's a great creator, and this idea I knew I had to steal. After that, I realized that I had not finished the walls or the ceiling of the cave, so I went back with the same variants that we were using before on the outside and started filling in the walls. Of course, no build is complete without covering it with leaves, and then I added some more leaves in different spots around the cave as well. A little bit more to finish off camera, and I'll be right back. Okay, I finally finished, and now I am ready to show you. So, ready? Let's go. I haven't removed the vine farm yet, but I probably will in the next episode, and I'll move it somewhere else, but we have a nice little pathway down to our cave area. And honestly, I really love the way that it looks. It's so overgrown and lush. I use these lily pads to make this little bridge. And then you can come in and you can see a beautiful, beautiful cave full of magic and mystery. And of course, the enchanting table. I added the chest there for some lapis and we have a grindstone on the wall as well. But it is time. We came here to make some diamond armor. So let's craft up our full set of diamond armor and then get to doing some enchanting. And I'm just going to take whatever we get. So protection three, protection four, protection four again. Okay. And unbreaking three, protection three. That was so lucky. Now we look super awesome and we're definitely way more protected against mobs. I feel so much better. I managed to catch another zombie villager and I have the perfect, perfect name for him. And it's thank you guys so much for 5k here on YouTube. I really, really appreciate all the support lately, whether it's here on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram. I appreciate you guys so much and see you next time.